D'abord nommé Tricky Beans, puis Tricky Beans, les membres fondateurs Tommy Kako et Tommy Portimo, la présence d'esprit de renommée de classe, leur groupe Sonata Artica. Créé en 1996 en Finlande, capitale Helsinki, patrie des reines de la neige et du... Les membres de Sonata Artica sont des apôtres du power metal aux côtés de leurs compatriotes de Nightwish et Stratovarius. Nous les avons rencontrés avant leur live au Bataclan pour leur tourner Stones for Her Name. Ok, so thank you and uh, hello to um, Tony Kako and Henrik Klingenberg. Yeah. That's ok. okay. <laughs> so, um, what's, uh, what's the actuality of uh, Sonata Artica for, for now? Well, touring, a lot of touring uh, for the uh, following t uh, half a year or so, I think. And uh, from this tour, we go home and s get to spend there for or like about four or five days or something, and then we're heading to North America, and uh, hopefully get back home on, on December 22nd, and then the tour continues uh, in mid mid January. Uh, yeah, I mean, right now we're just trying to stay alive until Christmas. Yeah, that's our main <laughs> goal, and that's our life at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so um, can you tell me a little more about the concept of um, the spirit of your band? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> help. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I think uh, we've been around now for quite a while, and, and we really know each other well. So of course everybody has their little ups and downs and things like that. But uh, these days we focus on the music, and, and we know how to work together, so we don't have to do any. Indian dances or something like that to, to make spirits show themselves or whatever. Yeah. So it's uh, I think we we're basically pretty mellow guys uh, off stage and of course sometimes not but <laughs> most of the time we take it easy these days. So I think that's the spirit. Uh, and artistically, I think we have we have evolved again in a different direction. Uh, even from the last album, it's a quite a big difference actually on the latest album, Stone Scroll Her Name and. And I think it's a good thing. We actually enjoy the touring much more right now than we did with the previous stuff, any of the previous stuff we've done, because uh, this is not a sporting competition anymore. It's just having fun and, you know, it can be easier sometimes for you to, you know, I'm not screaming from the top of my lungs all the time and, and actually on my own comfort range, which I finally realized that I can do that as well. It makes things all, all, all that much easier. But your your sound is more more heavy, it's heavier on your last album. Uh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you think, uh, well, if, if you consider it that way, yeah. But there are the songs are. I think the average tempo is is, is lower than yeah. what we've had in in the past, and, and the songs are more rock oriented in a way. And, and yeah, well, I can understand the heavy concept in in that sense, yeah. And uh, well, and, and of course we have on this latest album, one of the heaviest songs I think we've done ever, uh, somewhere close to you, for example. And, and, uh, but other than that, I think the main emphasis on the album is, is on, on kind of rock side. And, and this is something that we started off with back in 95, 96. We started out as a rock band, and which then evolved into metal music, and we got our uh, recording contract with this Stratovarius laden speedy power metal stuff but we have kind of drifted away from that already and, and, and trying to and uh, we will definitely uh, evolve in the future as well but I think for now for a few albums I think we're gonna stay at what we do right now I don't believe you <laughs> I know you don't I'm not sure if I do myself <laughs> <Yeah>. but, <laughs> yeah. but I mean this is what we do now I think the, the main thing is for us that, uh, that we are all really interested in music and we get bored very easily so that means that who knows what's going to happen in the future. But as long as the band is together and Tony's writing songs, I think everything's going to be fine. You, you, you often have bonus songs and for the Japanese editions of your, uh, of your CD. Um, you made some tours and recorded a live DVD in Japan. So uh, what, what's the thing with, uh, with Japan? Uh, Japan was the first place that really welcomed us and uh, which we kind of breakthrough in Japan uh, already the first album which sold quite a bit there and then we were uh, in this genre I think the biggest thing for a while there in Japan we were young and playing this speedy thing that was really uh, a pop thing 
in the certain circles there. It was still, of course, marginal thing, but but still, we, we had a lot of fans there with that stuff, and and uh, it, it it has calmed down. You know, we have gone in a different direction than our label and and a lot of the fans that we had then there would maybe desire, and uh, it it has changed. But uh, yeah, I mean, we used to be big in Japan when we were younger. Yeah, <laughs> you can say in that. Conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, it has been a good place, and we have a lot of uh, fond memories of, of Japanese people, and then definitely uh, we'll go back there again. We just came back, what two, three weeks ago. Yeah, we played on in, Loud Park in October. We played in Loud Park Festival, and we're going back there for the tour in in uh, February. Yeah. So. Uh, but when it comes to these, you were asking about bonus material. That's a must thing that uh, I think all the bands who really want to make it and do something good in Japan, they need to have a bonus yeah. track for the label because the albums cost so much more. If you buy the local disc from your downstairs store, it, uh, it's actually cheaper for you to buy it from Finland and then get it posted on your mailbox yeah so that's why the Japanese products and albums need to have something extra there always and then it, it kind of sucky in, in a way you know because I, you have to choose like a song that uh, it you don't want to put any shit there <laughs> either you know it should, should be an okay song but still you get that feeling that it, it's kind of somehow wasted there we get it. that song doesn't get enough attention I think but uh, I've told all the fans who complain about this kind of stuff that just go ahead if you have bought the actual album that is available at your local area there mm. uh, region and you, you I have no problem whatsoever if you go and download it from the internet yeah. because it's yeah. there anyways yeah. so uh, you don't have to go and buy the Japanese version if you just don't feel like it one bonus track yeah th th that's yeah and how do you feel the gig of tonight with a French uh, audience well, Perry has always been awesome yeah, place. Yeah, but it's, great it's the audience. first time playing this venue, so uh, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. And, yeah, <laughs> well, I think we were pretty much the last band to play Montmartre, Elysee yeah, venue yeah. before it burned down a few days after we were gone. Yeah, it was we had nothing to yeah. gig in uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had nothing to do with it whatsoever. So, uh, <laughs> but it, it was unfortunate. I liked that venue, despite it was old and it had lot of things that could be improved but I remember the last time we went there on the tour and uh, we started to wonder all the beautiful art yeah. that is there and the ceilings and everything and what do you know a few days later it's all gone but that's life it sucks but this venue looks really nice yeah. and uh, we hope that it doesn't burn down as well <laughs> <laughs> we hope to <laughs> um, what, what is your best gig or tour memory Oh, that's pretty hard to say. Yeah, I don't uh, think I remember anything. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. we have now done done so many shows. I mean, I think the band has done close to 800 shows now, if not even more. And I'm gonna play my 600 show in Switzerland in Bristol. So it's like it's all a blur. And then, then when you pick one memory and start to talk about it, then you're like, oh, I remember that one. Yeah, and that one, and that one. So it's, it's, uh, I've been in the band now for 10 years. So I have a lot of good memories, a lot of great memories. And I think it would be one to pick just one. But yeah, but there have been a lot of great big festivals, fucking open air with, I don't know, nearly 100,000 people there. Of course, you remember that kind of stuff there, special. And, and then uh, during uh, Europe and, and North America with Nightwish, those were both special things because you get to play in such huge audiences, especially in Germany, you know, having 10,000 people there. And uh, that was something extra special and cool. And, and um, uh, opening for Iron Maiden in Japan, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And of course, every time when you go in a new place, mm. somewhere you have never been before, those are special things, like Australia, for yeah. one. Hope well, to go there really back and... Learned their faces, except you. Yeah, except me, because <laughs> I'm smart to wash my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's your worst memory? Maybe you have one? Uh, well, um, every time you have to cancel a show because of yeah. whatever reason those always suck and, and the one time that comes to my mind right away is the one show in Madrid mm -hmm. we were actually opening for Nightwish at that, on that tour and, and uh, we had to cancel it because I lost my voice totally here in Paris no less and, and <laughs> uh, when I woke up in the morning I couldn't even speak so we had cancelled the show and it, it was something that we feel that maybe it might have been actually smarter to just go on stage and, and make the people sing and then the guys would play and it would be a karaoke show and cancel because I think we kind of suffered for that 
cancellation yeah, for well, a long, I mean, long time. I, I feel that way anyway, personally. Yeah, well, it's. I mean, if you look at all the shows we've done, there's a, maybe a handful of times we had have, had to cancel a show, so it doesn't mm. really happen very often. Mm. So when it does, of course, it's success, but that's life, and, and, and sometimes it doesn't work. We need five people for this thing to work, and. Yeah. If you don't have a voice, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so we are not a happens. karaoke band. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Bit, so. But I mean, tonight, unless you fall down and, or I fall down and break my neck when we leave from here, then I think the it show will go on. <laughs> it might be a wise thing to shut up about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a I think tonight's going to be really great anyway. And let's not soak in bad memories. Yeah, yeah. good idea. Okay, um, you bust the keyboards. What do you think about? some old gear like uh, analog scenes or do you use to uh, i think hendrick is more <laughs> into that kind <laughs> yeah. of stuff and, and I yeah it's, uh, <laughs> tony has a lot of synth uh, software synths that he uses mm -hmm. and so then I'm, i'm more into hardware stuff somehow the computer i think computers made for watching porn and sending emails yeah. and not <laughs> I think really really it. good quality <laughs> controllers <laughs> like piano yeah. and then like a synth yeah but uh, I'm, i'm fine yeah i have a I have a whole bunch of, of, of different stuff that I use, but uh, my main keyboard right now is, is the Core Game 3. And with that, I can get almost every sound I need. And then there's, you know, if we have some orchestra stuff, then we put it on the hard drive. So I'm really happy working that way. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. And is there one instrument, um, one musical instrument that you ever wanted to play but never did? Um, I think drums. <laughs> Th that would be cool. I think all the musicians want to be drummer in some point of their life. You know, sitting there <laughs> high on a throne and like yeah, yeah, yeah. seeing everything, and then it, it's 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 nice. And uh, although it's a hard thing, I think it, it's easier than being a singer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyways, well, I feel that way. Everything is easier than being a singer. <laughs> yeah, I, I got the like the worst <laughs> bite out of that cake. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, uh, saxophone would be really cool. Yeah. And I played it for a year, but it's. I played it enough to realize how long it would take me to sound the way I wanted to sound and that was too long at that point in my life. I mean, I was a teenager and, you know, girls, the usual stuff, and it sounds awful when you practice and you don't know how to get the right sound from it, so I just couldn't take it anymore I just went back to keyboards. One instrument that I, I would really like to play is, what do you call it? Holy Harp. Yeah, harmonica. Harmonica. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff. Because yeah, you could always have it on your pocket. And it's like, yeah, yeah. That's easy to play. Yeah, and I'm, I'm wearing the hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know one song on harmonica. So. Yeah, I never took t time to kind of start learning it. So maybe maybe when I'm older, I can do that and play acoustic yeah. guitar and have this thing there. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice. Okay. Um, my favorite Sonata tune is comes from your second album Silence which it gold uh, your first album to it gold record and this song is the power of one can you tell me a little more about this song um, <laughs> this is one book Sorry. there's a book by the same name uh, power of one by uh, Bruce Courtney um, Courtney Bruce I can't rem never remember which way around <laughs> the name is oh, I know and about anyway that's that's the book that I've actually read more than once and then it's about this this uh, little dude who grows up in, in South Africa uh, amongst the racist atmosphere and everything and he's, he's anything but a racist he's got a like black nanny and everything like that and then and, and he grows to be this kind of uniting light there kind of and then and, and that book inspired me to write the song about this 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 dude and then how we all should see the world uh, as, as, as one It, it, I enjoyed that song as well. It was my favorite yeah, song for a long time. A yeah. Song, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, while listening to some of your music, um, you can easily imagine yourself uh, walking in uh, in snow with uh, wolves and raven <laughs> and uh, forest. And is is your country um, a source of inspiration for your, your music? Uh, of course, you know, winter and, and, and the nature in general, it's a big thing. It has always yeah. been like our m image and, and everything. And, and uh, we have a lot of songs that are kind of 
environmentally aware and trying to relay the message of some kind to people that you should kind of pay attention because this world is, is quickly going down the drain and uh, and then And yeah, of course. Uh, most of us lives pretty more or less in the woods, <laughs> so <laughs> so it's uh, it's at least for me personally. Growing up, also it's oh. always been a big part. Like, be outside be, uh, and, and enjoy the outdoors and enjoy the nature. So mm. yeah, and of course when I'm playing my keyboards and writing songs, I would just look out of the window and see forest there. So. It's a, it's a source of inspiration. Sometimes you see a raven flying by, <laughs> which is a sign of some kind of uh, changes in the climate because we never had ravens when I was a child and they mm. just arrived there like two years ago that I saw the first raven actually on our level there up north. So in Weird. like 20, 30 years I can start my own wind yard up north. Yeah. It'll be hot enough. Yeah. And I'll have a hotel with, you know, beach and everything. Yeah. Palm trees and shit. <laughs> <I'll> start surfing. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's a little dumb question, but do you think uh, bands like you and Nightwish and uh, Stratovarius and can enhance uh, tourism in uh, Finland? Well, at least in, in our hometown, I know that for a fact, that yeah. we've had a lot of people come there just because we are from there. You know, uh, in one point we had a lot of Japanese people. You know, and, and yeah, and uh, you sometimes yeah. see them in, in you know when you go shopping, you know, buying groceries and stuff, and then and you see the Japanese people are like, <laughs> they are afraid of you know encountering you in way and and then coming to talk to you and ask for a signature or whatever. But of course you always can, hi and, and, yeah. and, and yeah, sure, uh, I can sign your albums and whatever and take a photo. Right, of course. I mean, in the grand scheme uh, scheme of things, I don't think. Uh, It really has makes a big impact, you know. If you look at tourism uh, as a whole, the business is so big. So if a few hundred fans come over just to see a show or whatever, yeah. it but might locally, not be such a big deal. But locally, locally, you know, it's yeah, especially in small cities. Yeah, and when we have our uh, when we have a show in our hometown, it's always kind of bigger event than any any other event yeah. in our hometown, yeah. pretty much. And 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 it brings like three or four thousand people. Mm. There in Kemi, which means the, all the hotels are totally jam packed. Yeah. They are full, and yeah. that's and, and yeah, restaurants yeah. and everything. So it's good for the economy of the local area. And, and we actually got a reward for being like this kind of booster there, yeah, with, yeah. Uh, which was really really nice actually to, to know that all the big business dudes they have recognized our meaning and importance in in, in, in that certain area <laughs> existence. Yeah, for that matter. Yeah. So yeah, it was nice. It was not monetary yeah. award. It was just like paper saying that, hey, dude, yeah. you are pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So one of the last question. Can you say me a little something in French, maybe? French. S'il vous plaît. Très bien. Très bien. And everybody, everybody can say, vous voulez vous coucher avec moi? Yeah, that, that was, that's great. Yeah, I, I think pretty much. Yeah. You can say something more, I'm sure. Je ne comprends un petit peu, François, mais je ne parle pas bien. I need to be drunk for that. Then I can speak. Mais c'est déjà très bien comme ça. And for finish, you have uh, 15 seconds each, if you want, to promote whatever you want. Whatever. Wow. Wow. Who's the first one? Oh, I can do that. Sure. Okay. Hey, terve kaikki te Tulkaa käymään Suomessa. Tulkaa paljon euroja meille sinne suomalaisille, koska meilläkin on vaikeaa. Työpaikat ovat tiukassa ja, ja meillä on kaunista luontoa ja äh, talvi on kaunis. Kesä on, on loistava. Syksyllä tulkaa Lappiin. Me ollaan siellä kanssa. Nähdään Lapissa. Kiitos. Okay. I'm, uh, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you all. I mean, you do the same. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you did it already. <laughs> all right. It's gonna be your first night at the Bataclan, and I think it's gonna be great. So we're gonna go and warm up, and if you missed it, <laughs> maybe I see you next time. Yeah. yeah. And I, what I said actually there earlier was that you all should come and, and visit Finland uh, because uh, it's a beautiful place with a lot of clean nature you can actually when you go up north you can drink from the ponds and then the rivers and everything and it, uh, water is clean it's it's perfect winter time is wonderful the sun doesn't come up at all and 
and you have uh, northern lights and, and stuff like that that you don't necessarily get here all that often. So um, come to Lapland. It's a wonderful place. That's what I said somewhat, yeah. <laughs> also some other shit, but never mind that. <laughs> Cheers. All right, cool. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And you're, you're free. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for all. And uh, See, see you. Um, see your gig. It is a my girlfriend. I call her back. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. I don't know how to say that as well. Merci beaucoup. Merci à vous. Eh ben, cool. La deuxième. Ça tourne toujours là. Alors là, 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 là